Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about exponential growth functions. So first we're going to talk about just the properties and basics of exponential growth, and then we'll get into some practice problems. <clears throat> Alright, so exponential growth function has a form y is equal to a b to the x. Now y and x are going to be the variables. A and b are going to be values that you assign or that are part of the exponential growth function. So if I wanted to write a growth function, I would need to make sure that a uh, is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1 in order for it to be, again, exponential growth. So an exponential growth function might look like this. y is equal to, let's say, 3 times 4 to the x. So as we place numbers in or input numbers for x, we're going to get a, a, a value out for y. And you can see, we say it's exponential growth, and I'm sure you've heard the term because the value increases at a more rapid rate um, as the value of x gets uh, larger and larger. So y increases at a, an exponential or more rapid rate as x gets larger and larger incrementally. So the parent of the exponential growth function is going to look something like this. Uh, I've got my black line here and then the exponential growth curve moves up and to the right. And you can see that this line is never going to touch the x-axis because the value for y can never be, regardless of what x is, even if x is a negative number, um, the value for y will never itself be a negative number. As I move along the x-axis in a negative direction, the value of y gets closer and closer to zero. As I move along the x-axis in a positive direction, y gets closer and closer to in positive infinity. But y itself is never going to be equal to zero. So the parent exponential growth function looks something like this. All right, so again, let's talk about uh, the parent exponential growth function. We drew it as a line or a graph that looks something like this. As x gets more and more negative, the value of uh, y approaches zero. And as x gets more and more positive, the value of y approaches infinity. But the value of y never gets to, never gets to a zero or a negative number. Okay. So the x-axis is going to be the asymptote, and the asymptote is that line which the graph approaches but never reaches. So I have my asymptote, which is the x-axis. And again, the graph gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never uh, touches it. The domain is going to be, so I can input any number for x and get a real number result for y. So the domain for the parent function is going to be all real numbers for x. I can put in any number for x and get out a real number result for y. And then the range is going to be y is greater than 0. So you can see, as I explained before, that y will never get to be 0 because regardless of the value for x in the parent growth function, and I'll move to the other slide, <clears throat> y is always going to be a positive number. So regardless of what you put in for x here, you're always going to get a positive number result as long as we meet these criteria, a is greater than 0 and b greater than 1. Okay, so the range will be y is greater than 0, and that's your output. All right, so translating exponential growth functions. I have my parent function, which I've now modified to accommodate uh, changes or shifts in the parent growth function. And the translated uh, exponential growth function is in the form y is equal to ab to the x minus h plus k, where h is the value that shifts the function horizontally by h units, and k is the uh, amount that shifts the parent function by uh, vertically by k units. All right, so we take our prior value here, y is equal to 3 times 4 to the x. So I'm going to write that in, y is equal to 3 times 4 to the x. And I'm just going to draw that graph, and it's going to look something like this. And then I'm going to rewrite this as y is equal to 3 times 4 x minus 2 plus Three. Okay, and actually, let's let me do this. I'm going to write, rewrite this in blue, and so we can draw a separate graph in that color. Y is equal to three times four x minus two plus three. I believe is what I had previously written, 
And so we know that the shift of this graph is going to be horizontally shifted by two units to uh, the right, and it's going to be shifted by three units up. So typically what I, I do is I identify the point of intersection, the uh, y-axis, where x is equal to zero. And now I'm going to shift the graph, uh, graph two units to the right, one, two, and then three units up, one, two, three. And now I have a graph which has been shifted accordingly, and I'm going to redraw that graph in blue. And for my students, I'm not looking for anything exact. I'm just looking that you know how to shift the graph uh, based on the formula that's prov provided to you here. Um, how to shift it horizontally, how many units, and how to shift it vertically. Now, uh, we talked about the value of A, and uh, the value of A is going to modify the way that the parent function looks. So if A is between 0 and 1, and in this case it's actually going to be greater than 1, the growth function is going to be stretched or elongated. If A is uh, greater than 1, the growth function is going to be compressed. So what do I mean by compressed or elongated? So let's use red for stretched, and then we'll use black for compressed. And so the stretched function right, is going to be, if I were just to draw a relative comparison to these two functions, stretch, stretch function stretches the graph out so it doesn't accelerate at, at a uh, rate which is as great as the prior function. So is this function relative to a stretch function where a is between 0 and 1? It's a little bit more elongated and it takes a little bit more time uh, to reach the y, positive y values. And then if a is going to be great, so a, the value of a here is 3. If a is greater than 1, then we're going to compress the graph. So now it accelerates at a greater rate, right? So it gets to uh, the y values, designated y values, quicker uh, than it would otherwise. So compressing accelerates the curve. Uh, stretching, if uh, A is between 0 and 1, elongates the curve. All right, so let's talk about exponential growth models. And I think these are uh, extremely important models. Uh, you're going to use these in a lot of different sciences, particularly biologies, biology, with uh, cell uh, reproduction and other uh, models for uh, carbon dating um, or other science experiments that you might do in high school, you'll see these models for exponential growth, right? So, or decay. Uh, now, growth models are used to evaluate the growth of something at a regular periodic rate, usually in years. The form of the model is going to be y is equal to a times 1 plus r to the t, where y is the ending amount of whatever you're analyzing, r is the rate of growth, a is the initial amount, and t is the number of years. And we say that 1 plus r is going to be the growth factor. So I might have, I'm trying to figure out how many cells I get after five years. And I start with an initial amount of one, let's say 10,000 cells. And I know that my rate is going to be uh, 50, well, let's say 50% per year. Uh, so it's going to be, excuse me, it's going to be 10,000 times, uh, 10,000 times, 10,000, which is my initial amount, that's A, times 1 plus, let's say, it grows at a rate of 50% per year, which is probably low, and we want to <clears throat> measure the amount after 5 years. So 5 is my period, 5 years, my growth rate is 50%, uh, identified as decimal, I have this one value here, don't forget to uh, include the one, and then I find the result of this value, it would be 10,000. Uh, times 1.5 to the fifth. So you can do that calculation. Actually, let's see if I can do that for you, just so you can follow along. So I, in my calculator, I'm going to type in 10,000, and then I'm going to uh, multiply that by 1.5 to the fifth, and I should get something along the lines of 75,938. So you should get an answer, 75,938 is the result after five years of exponential growth. So um, after five years, I've increased the number of cells in this particular example sevenfold. So this is one way to use this particular uh, growth model. Right, 
compound interest model. Now I think that this is probably one of the most important formulas that you'll learn in Algebra 2. And I say that because uh, if you want to earn money and keep money, you'll, and you want to make intelligent decisions about uh, the money that you're spending, this particular model will tell you what your money is worth in future dollars today. So it's a compound interest model. The compound interest models are used to determine the amount of money accumulated um, other than an initial investment which grows at a regular periodic rate. Um, it should be accumulated uh, from an initial investment which grows at a regular periodic rate. So I'm just going to uh, say of n, of n, this is a typo, of an initial investment which grows at a regular periodic rate. So the form of the model is A is equal to the principal or the initial investment again uh, uh, times 1 plus the regular yearly rate over the number of times it's compounded and then you take that all to the nt, which is the number of times compounded times the number of years. So now, instead of uh, creating a yearly rate, now we're compounding and accruing an increase in the balance uh, at a rate that's greater than yearly. So we have to consider that. So it could be a monthly compounding, it could be a quarterly compounding, it could be a daily compounding. Uh, it doesn't really matter, although that will affect um, the ending balance so let's take an example. Uh, let's say that I make an initial investment in my bank, and my initial investment is $5,000, and I want to find out after four years, so say $5,000, four years, uh, and we're going to compound quarterly, And so we, and we're going to do that over, we said four years. Okay, so the initial investment, I'm going to find the ending and balance. It's going to be 5,000 times 1 plus the periodic yearly rate. Oh, we said, let's make this 5%. So 5% over the number of times compounded within a period given a year. So we're compounding it quarterly, which is four times a year. And then we're going to multiply that by uh, four. So it's compounded quarterly, so uh, uh, rate, I'm sorry, the um, number of time compounded a year is n times the number of years is going to be 4. So it's going to be 5,000 times 1 plus 0.05 uh, over 4 to the 16th. All right, so again, we have an initial investment of $5,000. It's compounded once every quarter, so we say four quarters. So that's the value for... Um, that's going to be the value, where are we here? That's the value for n. All right, so let's just make this mark here. Number of, time com number of times compounded is 4. Number of years is going to be 4. The initial investment is 5,000. The yearly rate is going to be 5%. And you'd be lucky to get this at a bank right now. We want to find the ending balance. So uh, I now I have the ending balance is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus the yearly rate divided by the number of times compounded within a period uh, taken to or raised to the number of times compounded per period times the number of years that we're doing the compounding. So let's go ahead and calculate what that value is going to be. And if you do the calculations, you should get an answer approximately 6,000, your ending balance, 6,900. Sorry, $6,099.45 approximately. So after five years, compounded interest quarterly at a rate of 5% uh, annual interest, uh, you should have an ending balance of uh, 6000 approximately 6100 So you've made $1,100 off of that investment. Now you can see if you do the calculations over a longer period of time, you'll see how much uh, compounding and how much money you earn. So try to do this calculation when you do it for 30 years. and you'll really see that the power of compounding is tremendous, especially over longer periods of time. So very important to be smart with your money, uh, especially when you're younger. All right, that's it for exponential growth functions. Come and join us when we talk about uh, some practice problems using these growth functions on Auten Math.